For the first time in four years, America has a president who believes in the notion of unity. Sadly, 400,000 Americans are no longer with us as we turn this corner. But for the millions more still suffering, we have new reason to believe that help is on the way. As of today, we have a president who wants to try actual solutions and one who wears a mask in the Oval Office. Imagine that. Biden has already signed an executive order mandating that masks be worn on all federal property. If anything goes goes as, as every if everything goes as planned, Biden will oversee the largest vaccination operation in history, 100 million shots within his first 100 days. He'll also get much needed aid to local and state governments, fund additional testing, and hire 100,000 public health workers. Joining me now to discuss is Biden pandemic advisor, Dr. Celine Gounder. She's back with us. Dr. Gounder, the pressure, uh, I think, you know, is on officially today. Uh, Joe Biden is officially the president with all the powers that that entails. So a lot of people are, are asking the question, how is Joe Biden going to accomplish the goal of vaccinating 100 million uh, folks or 100 million vaccinations in 100 days? How are you going to go about doing that? What, what, are, what are the mechanics and logistics of that look like? One of the things that's become very clear since the FDA provided emergency use authorization for both the Pfizer and Moderna vaccines and rollout began is that there was not a plan for distribution. And so one of the things that you're going to see is now a solid plan in partnership. And I think key word here is partnership with state and local governments and health departments, as well as territorial and tribal governments and health departments. You're gonna see partnership with primary care providers and communities, uh, as well as federally qualified health centers, which uh, serve some of the most vulnerable, hard hit communities. And then finally, uh, in partnership with the local pharmacies, where many of us pick up our prescription drugs or do our shopping. So the idea here is to partner, not to tell all of these folks what to do, but to say, hey, you guys know your communities. How can we help you? What are the resources, the staff, the funding, the space, the supplies that you need to get the job done? And we'll do it together. Now that the administration, the Biden administration is actually in there, uh, in terms of the things that you're walking into, um, do you think that, you know, perhaps you underestimated the amount of skepticism Americans have? Um, is that one of the things you're going to tackle first in terms of PSAs, trying to educate folks about the, the variety of vaccines? What are some of the issues that, you know, on day one stand out beyond simply the logistics, as you just mentioned, which is going to be very complicated, but it is not the only obstacle to success? There is a massive communications campaign in the works, not just, frankly, uh, by the new incoming administration, but with a whole host of partners, uh, including the Ad, Ad Council, but many other community-based organizations, advocacy organizations, uh, healthcare provider groups, and, and others. And the idea here is to really tap into the strength of community, of community leaders, uh, and to have them be on the front lines of, of communicating, of speaking, of, of educating, of rallying their communities to get vaccinated. In terms of, uh, you know, flattening the curve, we've been trying to do that, I think, since the beginning of the pandemic. I think that's the phrase that everybody is like, we got to flatten the curve. I'm not sure that we ever were successful in doing that, certainly not as a country. Uh, different states were able to do that. Um, but the trajectory right now as it stands, as we sit here in January, it is going in the wrong direction post-holidays. What is this administration going to do specifically to tackle the trajectory of deaths? Uh, because I think that the, the case number, the death number, hospitalizations, all are going in the wrong direction. So when we talk about flattening the curve, what we're talking about is not having hospitals be overrun with sick patients, uh, with patients in the ICU. And unfortunately, in many parts of the country, we currently do have hospitals that are overrun. And there's not much we can do to reverse the trend with respect to people who are already infected. What we can change is people who have yet to become infected. And so that does require a massive scale up of vaccinations, but it 
also means that we have to double down on the things that we know work, whether that's the masking or the social distancing or sticking to our household bubbles as much as possible. If we are around other people to do so outdoors or if indoors in a very well ventilated space, all of those things still work and we need to keep doing them until we can get enough people in this country vaccinated. It's really great to see the president of the United States and the vice president wearing masks uh, and understanding how important it is to lead by example. Uh, so that's one difference uh, that began today. Uh, we'll see how the logistics go. We'll have you back um, as we go forward in this process. Dr. Gounder, thank you so much again for being here and please stay safe. Hi, I'm Zerlina Maxwell. Thanks for checking out our channel on YouTube. You can see more from Zerlina by clicking any of the videos on this screen and make sure you subscribe below to stay up to date on the day's biggest stories. Thanks for watching.